Good morning and welcome to Founded Eleven. We are officially in the month of December, which means we are in the last month of the year. I don't know about you, but for me, this year has absolutely flown by and I'm just in awe and amazed by all of the things that God has done. And we're so excited for the new year to see all of the new things that God will unfold in our lives as individuals, as well as in the life of the church. We have some important announcements that we would like to share with you. Just a reminder that we only have one service now for the month of December and on the 8th of January we will start again with our 10 o'clock service. We also have our Christmas gift project and this is pretty much where you make a gift, you put something together, you can fill it with whatever you would like and then on the 25th of December when we come to church, we will each be given a couple of these Christmas gifts to then go and hand them out to those less fortunate and who are in need during this festive season. So we want to encourage you, make a little gift, bring it with to church. You can leave it here at the church until the 25th. And we're just excited to also just be a blessing to those who might not have as much as what we have been blessed with during this festive season. We want to remind you, we are starting off with a new um, kingdom business program in the new year for all of our businessmen and women here in the church. More information will be released in the new year, but just keep your eyes open. It will take place um, probably on a Saturday morning, and we're just excited to sow into the business culture here at the church. We also have an exciting new discipleship program that is also kicking off on Sundays. You can contact one of the Anikis if you would like more information, as well as how you can get involved. Now for our grade 11 pupils, we have confirmation classes which will be starting in the first quarter of next year. Peter Nell is going to be hosting these classes and if you would like your son or daughter to be part of them, please register by sending information to info at vlng.co.za. We also have our small groups that will be starting again in the new year. And now remember, our small groups are for everyone. They are interest-based, they can be things that you enjoy doing, it can be a hobby that you have, it can be something that you just really love to do and you want to meet like-minded people who also enjoy doing that. If you'd like to host a more traditional um, small group like a Bible study or a reading group, we have anything for everyone. And if there isn't something that you would like to be part of, then consider starting your own small group. We will have leadership training in the new year as well as our sign up Sunday. So keep your eyes and ears open. This is an important part of the discipleship of our church and we would love to have you connect and find relationship and friendships in 2023. We also have the Company of Prophets Conference from the 16th until the 18th of February. They're part of a, um, a national prophetic network. They have an exciting guest speakers all the way from the United States. It's a powerful time of impartation and it's not something that you want to miss out on. As you can also see, we've also begun a very exciting revamp of our children's church facilities. We've done a lot of plastering and a lot of painting, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. If we invest in our children's church, it shows that we are investing in your children and we are investing in what God wants to do in their lives. So if you would like to consider partnering financially to help us continue with the project, um, you can just sow into the, the project account here at the church and just say children's church or Kinderkerk as your reference so that we know that that is where the money needs to be allocated. The next phase in our project is to retile the entire interior, which is not gonna cost a decent amount of money, but we want to make our children's church a beautiful, um, modern, safe facility for you and for your children so that you know that they, are, that they are in good hands when you drop them off on a Sunday morning. Now, if you love coffee, then this announcement is for you. As you might have heard, we are raising money to purchase our very own little coffee cart. And this is just to make sure that when we have guests or visitors or even just providing coffee and tea for our very own For Under the Levens family, that we are providing a fantastic service for you. So if you would consider sewing into this project as well, it also goes into the project um, account here at the church and then just say coffee cart or coffee vineki as your reference so that we can allocate the funds accordingly. We hope that you enjoy the rest of the service with us. Good day, everyone. Um, I'm going to speak to you today. I've titled my message, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper. 
And um, the body of Christ at large, and many of us are in a season of transition. Nationings are transitioning. And in the dictionary, the word transition is going from one process or one state to another state. Mostly it's something that we're familiar with, going into something that hasn't taken shape yet and that's not familiar. And because most of us or most people don't like change, um, for some of them the future looks quite daunting. Some people are afraid, some people are discouraged. And um, God has a plan for us even through transition. So um, South Africa is going through major transition. And if we look at South Africa and the challenges South Africa is facing, crime, corruption, unemployment, HIV, there are so many, too many to count. And if you look at the people around you, I know so many people going through trials. They've lost their jobs after COVID-19. Some people lost family members and they have to enter or navigate through a season where that which was wonderful is no longer wonderful anymore, and yet God has a plan. So I'm part of a um, governmental prayer group where we actually pray for South Africa. We pray um, for Johannesburg. Um, it's a group of strong prophetic people, and obviously we're not the only people who pray for South Africa, but... Just when you pray and you see corruption is exposed, there's another thing that happens. And even now, we look at what's happening with our president, suddenly our country is shaken again. And yet God has a plan. There's a prophetic promise for South Africa. There's a promise and a purpose and a destiny for you and me. But many people are really very discouraged. They struggle with fear. They're uncertain about the future. And the other day, I was a little bit discouraged about South Africa. And I thought, with the elections in 2024 facing, Lord, we've got such a battle ahead of us. And are our prayers really making a difference? And I felt the Holy Spirit take me to the book of Isaiah, to a time where Israel was going through a very difficult time. We saw that Israel, after they came through the promised land, <clears throat> uh, out of Egypt into the promised land, they really were blessed for many years. Um, but they succumbed to pagan worship, and the covenant recorded of, by Moses, so violate, they so violated that covenant, went into idol worship, that judgment and captivity was imminent. When Israel fell to Assyria, um, the world power at that time, the people were taken captive and they were scattered to different nations and they were exiled to many of them foreign lands that were unfamiliar to them. Um, but we see Judah had a godly king, Hezekiah. And because of Hezekiah's godly rule and reign, Judah didn't um, go into captivity at that time. But later on, Jeconiah was the king of Judah, and he was a very wicked, evil king. And so they fell into captivity, and they were taken over um, by Babylon. And they were in captivity for many years, I think over 70 years. And it was only when, Ezekiel, when Cyrus became king, he was the king of Persia, it was the ruling power at that time, that Israel um, was taken out of captivity and God rebuilt the temple and the people could return back to Israel and Judah. And many of the prophetic passages in the book of Isaiah foresaw this time of great difficulty for Israel while they went through captivity and while they were taken away from their homeland and that which was familiar and that exile actually became not only years, it became decades. I think it was about 70 years. And the situation looked pretty hopeless for the Israelites. They didn't know that they would ever return back to their homelands. They were oppressed. Life that they knew that was blessed was no longer blessed anymore. Their faith was at an all-time low. They were extremely discouraged. 
But it was then that God chose to step in, to speak to them and reveal himself to them and remind them about his character, who he is, and that he still had a plan for them. We see in Isaiah 43 verse 1, it says, Fear not, I have redeemed you, I have called you by name. And verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. If you go through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor will the flame scorch you. And then we see in verse 15 and 16, God announces that he is, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, I will make, uh, even though I make a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters, he says, I am God. He reminds them that he is God, he is Yahweh, the great I am, the self-existent one, the ever-present God. And God was saying to them, you are mine. I created you. Did you really think I was going to forget you or let you go? He was telling Israel, even though they were suffering under the earthly king of Babylon, he, the king of all kings, was still in charge and that he still had a plan for them. And he was very well aware of their suffering. He is fully aware of your suffering today. He is fully aware of the challenges you face. He is fully aware of the struggles we go through. And even what our nation's facing, he's fully aware. He knows what's going on in your family. And God is not going to allow harm to come to us. And verse 16, he reminds them that he is the one that makes a way through the sea. He is reminding them of the past and the promises he made to them when he helped them from the exodus through Egypt. And he helped them through the Red Sea and he did a mighty miracle because they were facing certain death but God. The story shows you that the Israelites are God's chosen people. They were going through the mighty waters, but he wasn't done with them. He never forgot them. And he's never going to forget you, and he's never going to forget me. Note it says that when you go through the waters, it doesn't say if. There comes a time in every one of our lives where we go through extreme adversity and difficulty. But thank God, he is for us. And then when God speaks in Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, what does he say? Forget the former things. Do not consider the things of old. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. God is telling them not to look at their past, to forget the former things. He wants you and I to know that we must forget the past. We must press on to the future. He, the God, the great I am, he was going to do something amazing for them. And he's going to do something amazing for you this morning. He is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the miraculous. He miraculously delivered the Israelites from Egypt. No longer with their children, he was telling them, look back at the miracles of the past and the stories of their youth. But he, they were going to experience something new, something amazing, something for their future. He promised them he was going to make a way out of their ex 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 exile and he was going to provide streams in the desert. That God is interested in you this morning. He's interested in me. Is interested in South Africa. He will always keep his promises. The Bible says every promise in the word is yes and I am. Amen. If we can only see him again, if you can only believe again, if you can only stand in faith again for some of you, his promises will stand and your adversity is not forever. Your calamity doesn't define you. I went through the most devastating time in my life in 2003. I was at the pinnacle of blessing of my life when um, we were going to be sent to plant a church in Cape Town, me and my family. 
Our church life was thriving when I was diagnosed with cancer. My husband at the time, he gave up on God and got disillusioned. And um, because of that disillusionment as well and a broken past, he, he fell in love with another woman. And um, it devastated our family. My sure thing suddenly wasn't my sure thing. The life that I loved was suddenly not the life that I loved now. And at that time, even in that difficult time, my, uh, my dad, who I loved dearly, passed away. So that was truly a midnight hour. And to this day, I still don't know how I made it. I wanted to live for my family, for my future. But when that happened, I didn't want to be here anymore. And um, thank God for praying, Mom. I could hear my mom, despite her own difficulties, pray through the night. When she told me, Emma, God says you have a purpose, I would say to her, Mom, leave the room. I don't care about my purpose. I want my life back. I want my husband back. I want my dad back. And you know what? For two years, I was stuck. I was hopeless. I couldn't pray lots. I couldn't do anything spiritual much. And one day somebody invited me to a camp and a lady called me out and God decided in the midst of my misery to speak to me. She prophesied a word over me and said that your, your calling still stands. God has a promise for you. And God is, and she prophesied my destiny, the things that I'm walking in now over me. And the Spirit of God touched me, and I wept and wept. And in that moment, God healed my broken heart. One word from God, one encounter with the Holy Spirit can change your whole life. And God literally took me out of my past into my present on my way to my destiny. And that which I thought disqualified me for my destiny. Divorce, I thought, I'll never fulfill my purpose. God chose differently, and that became the platform for my destiny and my purpose. So don't think your circumstances today is too difficult, that God can't help you. If He could help me, I can tell you He can help you. So I want to share some points when we're going through transition or the life that I was living after my divorce really sucked for me. But God, you know what? We can be honest with God. A week or two before that camp, I said to God, God, I cannot even worship you unless you touch me. So we don't have to be super spiritual and tell God that our lives are wonderful if it's not. We can be honest with him. If we are dry, we can ask Holy Spirit to touch us. But there are a few things that I want to share with you. Know that God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. John 10.10 10 says, My sheep will know my voice, and the voice of a stranger they won't follow. So if you're born again and you know Jesus, God wants to speak to you this morning. And he's going to speak. If you just take time to listen, God speaks through the little things. He'll speak mostly through the word. And you know what? When we're going into a new season, we're going to require greater faith. And our faith will never grow without us spending time in the written word. Romans ten seventeen says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God alone. God can speak in so many ways. He can speak through a prophetic word like he did that day. He can speak through circumstances. He can speak through the written word, through dreams and visions. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. In COVID-19, my son was taken up in high care, and he had pneumonia, and I thought, what would happen if Jeffrey didn't make it? But I remembered God has given me prophetic promises and promises for Jeffrey's life. And even though I was afraid to pray, and that evening I didn't even sleep, I played worship music. And that song, Way Make a Miracle Work, Promise Keeper, I was listening to that. And suddenly 
the words of that song hit my heart and God showed me even though I don't see it that song says I'm working even if you don't feel it I'm working and I knew God was working and he was healing Jeff and he made it turn around and five days later he was home you have to know that you have a godly inheritance and we mustn't settle for anything less the enemy will often camp at the promises of God and he wants to rob us of our inheritance I love this scripture in Psalm 16 6 it says the lines have fallen into pleasant places you have a good inheritance you know what some of you your life might not be at a pleasant place now but if you look at this scripture ask God to help to bring you back to a pleasant place because that's part of your inheritance part of your inheritance is healing it's blessing it's prosperity 3 john 2 says beloved i pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers god wants us to prosper we might not all be millionaires but we can all have more than enough we can have blessed relationships do not settle for less fight for your inheritance when I'm in a good place in God, I'm fighting for my inheritance, for my children, for my grandchildren. Take a stand against the enemy. Speak the word over your loved ones. Pray for them. Pray for your church, your nation. Because we have a godly inheritance. If you have cancer this morning, God said, healing belongs to you. Know that you have to take up your authority in this season for the territories and the areas that God has assigned to you. Do you know that God has assigned your family to you? Your workplace is assigned to you. There's a place in your church that is assigned to you. And if you're faithful and obedient, your influence will increase and you will have authority in regions and ultimately cities. God wants to grow. Your authority and faith has to be exercised. And the Bible says, Luke 10, 19, Behold, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing to trample them underfoot and nothing will by any means harm you. Do you know what? Take up your authority. In COVID, when the hospitals were full, I remembered a prophetic word that said that I'll have authority over systems. And I realized, isn't a hospital system a system? And so when my patients couldn't have beds and they were five, six hour waiting list and they were critical, I would say, Lord, you've given me authority over systems. You said so. And every single one of my patients, by the grace of God, found a bed. And apart from one person who was referred to me right at the end, I didn't lose a single patient because God is the God of the miraculous. God is the God of the faithful. So ask God, Lord, which areas have you assigned to me? What is my assignment? Because if you abdicate your authority, something else will take over and it won't be nice. It will cause hardship. And a great man of God one day said to me that, Irma, you abdicated your authority after that trauma and life became harder. And that which you backed down from, your purpose, your calling, made your life harder. So if you want to get a better life, you will have afflictions because the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them all. But you will have authority over those things. So don't back away from your purpose. Know that God wants to move you into a future. Many of us want to stay in the past. Some people got divorced years ago, and all they can think of is the victim they are. And, you know, life was fun when they were married. But you know, in Christ, you're not a victim. God even spoke to the Israelites and said, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. God has a future. He wants to take you into the future. And trauma so often makes us so we abdicate our authority. We don't think of the future. We want to live the way we used to live. But allow God 
to write your love story in your future. You cannot build on past mistakes. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes the enemy will keep reminding on us of what we did wrong. But we cannot build on those mistakes. Once we've said, Lord, forgive me, he forgives us and will take us on. You know what? Guilt doesn't actually help any of us. But repentance says, Lord, forgive me. But yet I'll do it differently. Show me a better way. God will take you out of any mess. And he'll make that your message. God will help you overcome the biggest pain. I remember one day when I was going through that hard time, time I saw on TV a little message. There's no pain on earth that the cross can't heal. And I thought, Lord, is that even possible? But God, know in this season that you need to be flexible to the leading of the Holy Spirit. It was amazing for me in COVID to see how Christians weren't spirit-led. They didn't even know what it meant. But Romans 8.14 says, Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they the sons and daughters, they know what it feels to have a dad that will protect, provide. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love anybody, but you'll know that you're a son and a daughter of the King because the Holy Spirit will always draw you to Jesus and he will reveal Jesus and the Father to you. Galatians 5.22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, and self-control. Against those there is no law. So how do you know you're living a Spirit-led life? You're walking in the fruit of the Spirit. You're not shouting at everybody. You're not playing a victim. But you know, walking in the Spirit is part of a weapon against the enemy for you to come into your future. So submit your will, your mind, your emotions to the Holy Spirit and say, Yes, Lord, whatever you want, walk in love. It's amazing for me how many Christians don't love well. But if they're full of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, they will love well. Know that God puts people around you to fulfill your destiny. You will never, ever fulfill your destiny without having people around you. I was speaking about authority earlier. We have to be in a community. You have to be in a church family. We have to submit under authority. So we have to submit under the leadership that God chooses in the church that we're in. But you know what? It doesn't mean they're perfect because we're not perfect. Why do people always demand perfection from people in churches? But you know what? We're not an island. And God will put people in your life for this season that he'll bring new people because sometimes we have to open our hearts to new people that can take us further, that can lift you up, that can encourage, that can strengthen, that can speak your future. And sometimes it's so hard to open our hearts to that. But people can break you or make you. When God wants to bless you, he brings a person. When the enemy wants to destroy you, he can also bring a person. But go where the life is. Relationships that are godly will bring life. Do you know what? Satan is the accuser of the brethren. If you find yourself with people always accusing you, slinging mud, that is not the Holy Spirit. You have to shut the door to that. Not necessarily to that person, but you cannot listen to that accusation the whole time. God will bring covenant relationships into your life. Covenant relationships don't use, misuse, or abandon us. They stick the test of time. The covenant relationships in my life have been such a blessing to me. When I've gone through hardship, even COVID-19 as a doctor, it was terrifying for me. I never knew when it would end. But yet God had put people and alignments around me that could strengthen me, that would have a dream. And you know what? Alignment leads to life. Align yourself with God's purposes and the people that he's put around you. And then lastly, prioritize the presence of God. I cannot say this enough. But Psalm 145, 18, 19 said, God is near to all who call on him. 
in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. You know what? Do things that will attack the presence of God, that will attack God's attention, that will unleash his favor. Speak the way he wants you to speak. See what he wants you to see. Renew your mind in the word. Pray like never before. Pray in the spirit and pray in understanding. Do you know what? That's what the Bible says. Pray for people. Worship like never before. And build your faith like never before. Do you know what? When the presence of God comes, the enemy has to fall. The enemy has to go. And it's where the presence is that we can hear God most clearly. God has not called the church or his children just to survive. He's called them to prevail. The greatest onslaughts and attacks often come before the biggest breakthrough and the biggest miracle. Your boss is not your source. Your, your doctor is not your healer, but God is. Jesus paid the price so that you can have the fullness of God. God has the answers. He has the solutions. And God is going to give us such wisdom in this hour because the spirit of the holy, the wisdom of the God is going to separate us from the world. He wants us as the church to be the answer, to be the solution, to stand out. He's calling forth the Daniels, the Josephs. He's calling forth those generals in this hour. And Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. The Bible says the people that know their God is going to be strong and do great exploits. So today I just want to encourage you. And I want to pray for you. And say that whatever you're going through, if you're going through a very difficult time, or you're going through a time that I went through in 2003, and you can't even see anything, know this today, that God says He sees you. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's got a hope. And God says He will work all things together for those who are called according to His purpose. He's about to speak to you today. He's going to reveal his nature. And you know, when you come through this trial, you'll have a testimony. You will have a revelation of his character that you've never had before. I've known God in good times. But when I've learned to know his nature in difficult times, I really got such a revelation of his love for me, of his deep love for me. Do you know what? The deeper the valley, the greater the miracle. I saw God take a broken family and touch us and touch my children. And today they serve God. They're happily married. But God said, I see you. I see you, Irma. I see your children. And I have a plan for you. So I just want to end this message just to say a prayer for you and just release the blessing and the favor of God to you over your life. So Father, I come to you this morning and I say thank you, Lord, that you are the great I am, that you are the ever-present one, that you're the miracle worker, that you're the promise keeper, that you're the way maker. And Lord, today I decree and declare that Holy Spirit, you be with everyone that is watching this broadcast. And Lord, I thank you that even now that you're healing that person's shoulder. Lord, I thank you, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I see somebody with a blue shirt and you're watching this and you think, how can I ever get a job again? But God says, despite your age, I'm going to give you a job. And not only am I going to give you a job, but I'm going to give you excess finances. You're going to be able to do things that you've never done before. I'm even going to give you your own small little home. So take courage this morning. God is healing someone's marriage this morning. You're going to see your husband in a different light. You're going to see him the way that God sees him. You're going to speak the word over him. And God is saying to you today, don't speak against his purpose and destiny. 
So, Lord, I just want to honor you. I just want to worship you today. And I just want to say, Holy Spirit, continue to work with our hearts. Continue to work with each and every one of us so that we can see Jesus, that we can go into our next season full of faith, full of courage, full of fire, and become the answers for our families, for our cities, for our churches and this nation. Bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.